The news media, especially right-wing media, likes to claim that both parties are equally corrupt and dirty. Any tiny thing the Democrats do is treated as treason, while anything the GOP does is treated as just unfortunate, no matter how bad or horrible it is. It has created the narrative that both parties are full of crooks. The media also acts like Trump is an anomaly when it comes to criminal behavior in the GOP. Since 2000, the crimes and scandals of the GOP have massively dwarfed the crimes and scandals of the Democrats. Oddly enough, matching the time that Fox started going more and more right-wing. If anything, since the Clinton years, the Democrats have gotten cleaner and cleaner because of this magnifying glass on them, while their opponents' crimes are shoved under the news rug, all in the name of not being viewed as biased. This is a comprehensive list of all the scandals in the federal government from Wikipedia up until June 2019, and this does not include the new scandals involving Ukraine, because I don't have the time or energy. Donald Trump Administration, January 2017 to June 2019. Russian interference in the 2016 U.S. elections, 2017 to 2018. United States political sexual scandals, Donald Trump sexual misconduct allegations, lists of lawsuits involving Donald Trump. President Donald Trump is currently being investigated in 17 different investigations. There are also ample evidence of breaking the emoluments clause and therefore bribery. The chief investigation led by special counsel Robert Mueller is now closed. No charges have been filed, though Mueller expressed that charging a sitting president with a federal crime would be unconstitutional, and so it was never an option in the job of Congress. All right, let's move on. Executive Branch, Elaine Chao, also Mitch McConnell. These guys are a married couple. Transportation Secretary and Senate Majority Leader. Ms. Chow did not divest from her road building materials business and every time they hold an infrastructure week her stocks go up with the potential of no bid contracts if infrastructure actually picks up. Transportation money to the tune of $90 million has been unfairly sent to Kentucky instead of fairly to all the states just to help her husband's re-election campaign. She also tried to use the U.S. government to get her family contacts into the Chinese government. Scott Pruitt, Administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency, resigned citing increasing numbers of investigations into his administration. The EPA's own ethics chief had been pushing for independent studies into Pruitt's actions and 13 other separate investigations were underway, including alleged corruption for personal gain, salary increases without White House approval, use of government staff on personal projects, and unnecessary spending on office and security. He resigned in July 2018. Albert Kelly, EPA Superfund Task Force Director and top aide to the EPA Chief Scott Pruitt, resigned amid scrutiny of his previous actions as leader of the bank in Oklahoma, which led to a $125,000 fine and lifetime ban from banking. Pasquale Nino Pareto, EPA Security Administrator, resigned after allegations of lavish spending and improper contracts. Samantha Dravis, EPA Associate Administrator and Senior Counsel of the Office of Policy, resigned abruptly after allegations of being a no-show employee and fully paid for at least three months and barely showing up for the rest of her term. George Papadopoulos, foreign policy advisor, pleaded guilty to making false statements to the FBI agents relating to contacts he had with agents of the Russian government while working for Trump campaign. He was sentenced to 14 days in prison, 12 months on probation, and 200 hours of community service. Michael Flynn, national security advisor, was forced to resign in February 2017 over conversations he had with Russian envoys about sanctions during the transition. In December 2017, Flynn pleaded guilty to charges of lying to the FBI as a plea bargain. William C. Bradford resigned from the U.S. Department of Energy Office of Indian Energy amid reports he had made racial slurs directed at Barack Obama on Discus and Twitter. Bradford had claimed that some of the comments were the result of identity theft and not his. Tom Price, Health and Human Services Secretary, was forced to resign in September of 2017 after it was discovered they spent hundreds of thousands of taxpayer dollars on private flights. Brenda Fitzgerald, Director of the Center of Disease Control, was forced to resign on January 2018 after it was discovered that she bought stock in tobacco, the leading cause of preventable death in the U.S., and was creating a conflict of interest. Taylor Wayeneth, Deputy Chief of Staff at the White House Office of National Drug Control Policy, resigned when it was revealed the 24-year-old had no qualifications for the position and no related work history other than working on President Trump's campaign. David Swordson, White House speechwriter, resigned after his ex-wife Jessica Corbett came forward with abuse allegations. Vivica Wright Simpson, Chief of Staff 
to Secretary of Veterans Affairs, David Shulkin, resigned after an Inspector General report charged that she had altered an email to make it appear Shulkin was getting an award during a trip to Europe in order to gain approval to use taxpayer dollars to pay for Shulkin's wife to accompany him. Rob Porter, White House Staff Secretary, resigned from the position on February 7, 2018, following public allegations of spouse abuse from his two ex-wives, Colby Holderness and Jennifer Willoughby. The allegations were supported by photographs of a black eye and restraining order. The Washington Post reported that the White House counsel, Don McGahn, had known since January of 2017 about the allegations Porter's ex-wives made to the FBI, and that Chief of Staff, John Kelly, had known about the allegations since October of 2017. Tony Took, chief of the U.S. Forest Service, resigned after a series of sexual harassment and retaliation accusals. Rick Gates, 2016 deputy campaign chairman to the president, pleaded guilty to conspiracy and lying to investigators concerning his work lobbying with Ukraine, as well as tax and bank fraud. Michael Cohen, lawyer, personal attorney to President Donald Trump and vice president to the Trump Organization, pleaded guilty to tax evasion, bank fraud, and illegal campaign contributions. He also helped arrange non-disclosure agreements to Stormy Daniels, Karen McDougal, who allegedly had affairs with Trump. Cohen pleaded guilty to eight counts of tax evasion and making false statements. Paul Manafort, campaign manager for the president, was charged with 18 counts of tax and bank fraud, which involved keeping $65 million in foreign bank accounts and spending $15 million on himself. He was found guilty on eight counts. Manafort was sentenced to another 43 months for charges of federal conspiracy and obstruction. This does not include all the blood money he made in Ukraine and other nations as PR director for dictators, which you can learn more about on Behind the Bastards. The legislative branch. U.S. Representative Duncan Hunter and his wife were indicted in federal court on dozens of charges including wire fraud and using campaign funds for personal use. U.S. Representative Chris Collins, Republican of New York, was arrested by the FBI and charged with wire fraud, conspiracy to commit security frauds, seven counts of securities fraud, and lying to the FBI. U.S. Representative Steve Stockman, Republican from Texas, orchestrated a scheme to steal money from charitable foundations and the individuals who ran them. The funds were used to finance Stockman's campaigns and personal expenses. He was convicted on 23 felony counts of perjury, fraud, and money laundering, and sentenced to 10 years. Jason T. Posey, Republican Director of Special Projects and Campaign Treasurer for Stephen E. Stockman, at the personal direction and supervision of Stockman, Posey took almost $1 million from various sources and illegally funded it into Stockman's 2014 Senate campaign. He pleaded guilty to mail fraud, wire fraud, money laundering, and conduit contributions. Thomas Dodd, Republican Special Assistant to Steve Stockman, pled guilty to two conspiracy charges and agreed to cooperate with prosecutors. U.S. Representative Blake Farenholt, Republican from Texas, resigned in the wake of reports he used public funds to settle a sexual harassment lawsuit and had created an intensely hostile work environment for women in his congressional office. U.S. Representative Pat Meehan, representative from Pennsylvania, resigned following the revelation that he used taxpayers' money to settle sexual harassment claim brought by a female staff member. U.S. Representative Timothy Murphy, Republican of Pennsylvania, the married anti-abortion congressman, resigned just before an investigation could begin concerning his allegation urging his mistress to seek an abortion. U.S. Representative Greg Giaforte, Representative of Montana body slammed political reporter Ben Jacobs as part of his settlement with Jacobs. Gianforte donated $50,000 to the committee to protect journalists. Gianforte was then found guilty of assault and sentenced to 40 hours of community service, 20 hours of anger management, and a 180 day deference sentence and $385 fine and court fee. He also won that election. U.S. Representative Trent Franks, Republican of Arizona from the 8th District, abruptly resigned when confronted about sexual misconduct with his staff. Clint Reed, Republican Chief of Staff of the U.S. Senator Marco Rubio, was fired for allegations of improper conduct and threats to withhold employment benefits from an unnamed subordinate. Judicial Branch, U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit, Judge Alex Kaczynski, appointed by Ronald Reagan, retired following allegations of sexual misconduct from several women, including former clerks. Now for the three Democrats. U.S. Representative Corrine Brown, Democrat from Florida, was found guilty of fraud using $800,000 from a fake charity for her own personal use. She was sentenced to five years. Ronnie Simpson, Chief of Staff to Representative Corrine Brown, pled guilty to fraud. 
U.S. Representative John Conyers of Michigan resigned in December 2017 after sources revealed he had paid a $27,000 settlement to one of his staffers who had accused him of sexual assault. Conyers resigned after congressional investigations were initiated against Conyers. And U.S. Senator Al Franken, Democrat of Minnesota, resigned in January 2018 after several accusations of sexual misconduct. And that's just what we know as of June, and not including all the people who are being arrested and charged who helped in Trump's campaign, such as Roger Stone and Peter Smith, as well as all the corruption activities in the NRA. There are two Democratic representatives for crimes, one chief of staff on the list, and Al Franken for harassment. I'm glad they're gone, even though they were on my team, but they were polluting our team, so we excised the cancers. Your party is beyond repair. Four Democrats for every 31 Republicans, whose most minor of crimes would have been screamed from the rooftops by Republicans, and will be spun as equal, if not worse, than anything Republicans have done. That's around one Democratic crook or flub for every eight Republican crooks. Under Obama, there were eight Democrats convicted, and under Bush, there were four. And there were just four pages of scandal under Obama, and seven pages under Bush. Their eight-year term compared with Trump's three pages in his two-and-a-half-year terms. So that's one Democrat for every seven Republicans when Democrats are in power, or 20%, and one Democrat for every 16 Republicans when Republicans are in charge, or 6% of all dirty politicians under Bush. The Republican Party is a criminal organization and rapidly escalating because they have a news outlet that will rationalize anything and everything they say and do. The last time there was an equal amount of scandal and conviction in both parties was in the 90s when there were 13 in each party. Dear Republicans, when is this so-called morality and the love of the Constitution finally going to show up? This isn't even a comprehensive list of all the cabinet members, campaign consultants, and staffers found to have criminal or ethical behaviors, and this doesn't even cover George Nader, a convicted pedophile who was a close campaign advisor of the president, and the president knew this. You refuse to have Hillary win because of pointless investigations of Benghazi, an incident which has happened to every president all the way back to Reagan, and no one blamed anyone in charge, and the Republicans, after millions of tax dollars of hearings, could not find anything against her, and because she had a private email server, which eight cabinet members and Ivanka and Jared now have, and you still don't seem to care or want to budge on your position on him. They're constantly, blatantly flaunting the rule of law and hiring literal crooks, and you keep doing mental backflips to rationalize why the other side is just as bad. I'm really, really dubious that you have any morality at all and are just tribalists masquerading as moral superiority to the point that you will let a criminal organization run the nation full of money launderers, nepotism, and sex offenders because they are your guys. That's not morality or ethics. You are just petty, terrible people. Get some ethics or stop pretending to care about America or morals. That goes for Republican lawmakers and voters. Share this with anyone who tries to say that all governments are corrupt. No one has had this much criminal behavior and flaunted it. Share this with Trumpers. Make them aware of their dirty party. Democrats aren't perfect, but as a ratio, they are essentially all law-abiding citizens, and Republicans are all criminals. So thank you so much for joining me on my podcast. I'm sure there was nothing controversial about this and everyone will happily get along in the comments section, which you can do on the YouTube version of this video or my Facebook page, After School Democracy. Link in the show notes. Just a reminder that I'm Anubis2814 on YouTube and I have over 500 videos on different topics that I've made over the past 10 years. Please subscribe and if your podcast site has the option, give me a like or review. If you think what I have to say informed you, consider supporting my Patreon. I'll be doing this podcast weekly and try to get it out on the same day, so I hope to see you here next week, ready to be filled with new ideas. Take care. A big thank you goes out to Elias Garcia Guevara and Joe Taylor, who sponsor the show at $10 a month at the Wapawet level on Patreon. Please consider donating as well if you can, and thank you all for listening.